Namaskaram. I I have a question on the on the last conversation I had with you. So my question is: Is it possible for everyone to not go for enlightenment or that stages if one is going on a journey of consciousness growth? Because uh, so my experience has been that sooner than later that that desire of which you mentioning as unity consciousness comes in. So is it possible to avoid that? I'm not yet sure uh, if I've understood your question. So my question is right now you're mentioning this teaching is for people who are not seeking enlightenment, who are not seeking any samadhi or anything. It's about being here and in a surrender state. The last time you mentioned about nirvikalp samadhi. So my experience is that choiceless state is the surrender when when happens when you are basically just being here being here being here you're not you're not giving into any thoughts which the mind is the ego is giving to you so how is it possible to avoid it at the very first is it even possible how is it possible to avoid what avoid going into the desire of unity consciousness or samadhi or that kind of if i'm able to let me just paraphrase that question what you're asking is when you are in this present moment and you're focused on the on the self on the soul on the source in a posture of surrender it can suddenly lead you to states where you long to also experience the cosmic is that what and how to avoid that yeah if it can yes. be it has to be this teaching is clearly you do not go outside the system and start to you do not you have to stay within the system you're present you're always present of course it's a sadhana not everyone can be present all the time obviously but the 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 fundamental teaching is to be here and now in this world functioning in this world as a present human being compassionate connected within but fully aware of what's going on around so you have to train yourself because there is a moment where the let's say the temptation is to just you know to penetrate into the soul and become part of it that you can't do you have to catch yourself it is possible that it happens that's one of the pitfalls but you have to catch yourself because you don't you don't want to become like do you want to then space out you have to stop yourself if there's a big tiger in front of you and you put your hand inside its mouth then you know you have to stop the tiger before it starts to devour you you are responsible for your own adhyatmic experience there's no inbuilt safety mechanism spirituality is a risky field you never know what's going to happen but it's also an adventurous field it's an it's an exciting and adventurous experience daily all the time we see that over here i mean just this morning i was i was saying to nyaneshwar why is it that we all are smiling so much we are always smiling sometimes there are some some ups and downs but it's just generally it's a state of everyone is smiling and it's not normal it's sometimes almost like how it's because there is joy when you are present when you live a life which is here and now i think deshna you were there too right is you were just laughing about some stupid thing but it's just that being joyous and it's not this sort of strange vibration they have in these ashrams where everybody's so holy it's a real joy that happens when you're present if you go into those samadhi states you can't be joyous it's a projected thing after that there are exceptions to everything i'm saying but why would you want to go into those samadhi states why look at this world around you look at all the look at everything around look at all these people each one is an amazing being take a look 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 you probably haven't looked at another person in a, in a 100 years right because it's not about 
being somewhere out there. It's about here and now, now, present, you know. And then that smile will be stuck on your face after that. So you have to be careful because your original training is to meditate karo das ghante ke liye aur nikal jao kahi bhi. Space out. This is not a space out teaching. So to put it here, actually, um, so my training was not this. It's mostly I, just one thing. For example, right now you said that if there is any question, you tune in and you ask the essence. And for, for some reason, I don't know what, I feel it. I feel it in, in me. Who, oh, for some reason, is it? Like, for what reason could it be? For some reason, you feel the truth. Because the truth is there. That's why you feel it. Go ahead. I'm just, I'm happy that you feel it. Because not everybody does. Yeah, but I, I don't want to put it on me, ki, okay, many, I have done something. No, no, no. It's not spiritual ego. You are not in danger of that. You don't have that thing in you. It's fine. It's a great thing. You feel it. It's amazing. You know, not many people feel it. That's why I'm saying. But, so, uh, the conflict and the confusion was a big issue for me, like, throughout my young years. And There's always this question of, like, what am I really looking in life? Like, nothing was satisfying. And then, this idea of being present came in. How old were you when that came in? 21. And how did you, where did it come in from? From yourself? Or did you read about it somewhere? Or? I mean, the first instance was when I was like 15, 16, because I had these uh, nasal blockages. And I used to do these breathing exercises because somebody told me that this can cure it. And I used to keep jumping around and telling that, be here, be here, be present, why are you? Very Shall good. Yes. After four or five years, I got to know that there is something called adhyatma, there is something called spirituality, and there is something called truth, to be specific. This practice of being in surrender and let go was, there was a lot of joy, but a thought which came in is what is behind all this. Where did you learn about surrender? Where did I learn about surrender? Yeah, where did that samarpanam surrender, where did you first learn that, at what age, or when did it become part of your reality? At 21 only, I was practicing some, it just stumbled upon me. They stumbled when I had like a bad traumas. There were instances that I, I wanted to kill myself. There were more instances of meeting some teachers. We mentioned about the body suffers a lot. And I honestly suffered a lot with managing myself physically. In the last two years, I've tried to bring myself back into the world and probably giving up on the search, let's be normal. That has also not resulted in joy, it's been like... Well, Mohit, you know, there are those people, they go to temples, they worship the gods, they are happy like that. They do their thing, they, they have their family life, they do their pujas, they do their yagnas, and they, they live like that. There are those who don't do that either. And then there are those who are... who are fundamentally made for self-knowledge, self-realization. You are one of those characters. You won't have joy in your life unless you learn to do this bending and to take up that spiritual journey consciously. You have to take it up consciously. It doesn't mean sometimes just listening here and there. It has to be a dedicated, disciplined approach. Otherwise, you'll stay like this, which is fine. If you want to stay that way, then that's your choice. Or you have to take up a dedicated, focused... I mean, you're actually a spiritual seeker, but you don't behave like one. Yeah. Behave? It, what do you mean to behave like one? You don't take up an approach with discipline. You think that just by sort of cobbling your life together with different episodes that it's just going to work out. It doesn't work out that way. There is no joyousness that way. Otherwise, everybody would be nice and joyous. If you want to experience that lightness of being and that joy every day, 
you have to take up your spiritual sadhana, your practice. It's not the same for everybody. Each one has a different path. There are many paths that lead to the truth. Sanatanis know that there are many paths that lead to the truth. This is not the only way. But you have to take up some way, and you have not done that. That is why you don't have joy. So this one practice I did very sincerely was being very focused on seeing who am I, like what is. That's the wrong thing to do because it is Atma Vichara. Atma Vichara is a conceptual exercise. No, not as Atma Vichara. Well, who am I is Atma Vichara. There was a strong sense of there's something which thought cannot know, it, it cannot even touch it. Yes. So there I felt a little conflict with when you say it's soul is material. My thing is, my feel is thought soul is not, it is not, no material entity can touch it. I met like few more people also who have, have this. Thought is not capable of grasping the nature of soul. Your thinking is not capable of grasping it. That's the reason why you can't grasp through your thinking when I say that the soul is material. Because what is material? The Shastras, they say, the soul is indivisible, it has no smell, you can't touch it. But the soul is an atom, it's a material reality which is indivisible, which you can't smell, which you can't touch. And you can't even grasp it actually with the conceptual. So if you try to go into Atma Vichara is, who am I? That's Atma Vichara. The, the technique of Atma Vichara, as practiced by many in the tradition of Advaita Vedanta, is to ask that question. But that question is never the starting point, of course, of a, of a spiritual journey. It, it appears as a rhetorical question along the path. So let's leave that aside. You can't grasp what the soul is with your thinking. You can only experience it and feel its presence which is beyond the ability to discuss or describe what it is. It is just silence and peace. There's no... I can put a word to it. 30 days back, I was there for a few regular days. And I came into the setting after a long gap because I was trying to avoid this. You were trying to avoid coming here? Oh. Avoid? No, like I wanted to balance out with the world. I said rather... <coughs> That's such nonsense. I'm teaching you how to live in this world. Exactly what I'm trying to teach you is how to live in this world, Mohit. So you got the message totally wrong. It is the exact opposite. I'm telling you how to go in the marketplace and buy the correct fruit. You stand there and you don't allow yourself to be controlled and influenced by the ego. You go to the, to the source, to the soul, and you ask a question, should I buy this mango or not? How can this be a teaching that takes you away from the world? Because the energy was again... Because you fell in the trap. Because you don't do all the other things. Did you do Dakshina? Did you do Daan? Did you do those things? No. Nice Sanatanis you all are. Everything else you all will do, but you all won't do the main thing. There are certain things you have to do. You are a spiritual seeker of, the, of a high order, I have to say, because you actually take up these practices. But no, the other part is the uncomfortable part you want to. Then obviously you're not going to get it. I contribute. It is not like I don't contribute to this. It has to be done consciously. I'm not saying you're stingy. You have to do these things consciously. As a spiritual seeker, you don't just take off on your own trip. You have to decide firstly. You have to decide to take up a spiritual master. It doesn't have to be this one sitting here. Whoever it is that suits you. Have you done that? No. You think you can do it on your own? You can't. There are some... One. You have to take up one. You cannot have seven. <laughs> it will confuse your brains. Because already you are such a thinker, you are a deep thinker, you know. You take up one. It can be anyone. I don't know. It doesn't matter. In the Sanatani system, you start out with the small children, they touch the feet of the parents. Why? Because they take the blessings from the parents. The parents show them the gods. Then they go to the temples and they touch the feet of the gods. They do the artis, they do the, 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 the offerings, they do all of that. Why? Because the gods show them the gurus. Then they go to the gurus, they touch the feet of the gurus. They learn samarpan further. Why? 
because finally the guru shows them the, the divine within and they have been trained in samarpan till that point where they can actually meet with that divine without falling into the traps. You see what I'm saying? So at one point you're going to have to make that decision. And it can be, it can be anyone that suits your, you know, you have to feel the connect. If you don't have a connect, you shouldn't. You should take up a spiritual master that will guide you to live in this world. You know that in this subcontinent, 50 years ago, every family had a Kula Guru. Why did they have that? Those gurus were not specifically amazing, but it was to learn Samarpan. Tomorrow you'll have children, that's what you're going to teach your children. It's the resurgence, the rebirth, the punar janam of Sanatana Dharma, and that's where it is. It's in the temple with the deity and the worshipper, the temple, the murti, the worshipper, and the ashram, the guru, and the shishya. Those are the two pillars that hold up dharma. So if you want to know yourself, you have to be able to learn that, to bend. If you are a foreigner, one of these people here who grew up in an Abrahamic system, I can understand that they cannot grasp and accept the idea of a guru. But if you are a Sanatani, you better accept it, because that will show you yourself, unless you are unless not at all inclined, then of course, then you go to the temple, you do your pujas and you are fine. I don't have resistance to gurus. But in the journey, the first instances were Nirakar. The thirst is of freedom. So at the end of the day, my experience is when you have to let go of the Guru also. Of course, but you can't get rid of the Guru until you find yourself. That's the point. I'm talking about classical professional seekers. This doesn't apply to everybody, but it applies to you. Yes, you have to get rid of the Guru, but you have to have a Guru first. You have to even understand what Guru Vada is, because you're a generation that doesn't know this. You are the third generation in this subcontinent that doesn't have any idea of what's going on. There's a fear of Gurus. Why? Because that fear was nicely planted in you by the media that is controlled by the religions. The media has done this, nobody else. Your grandfather would have had a guru. Everybody had a guru and nobody wanted to listen to them, but it was part of living. One had a guru, a Kula guru. You had a Kula Devata or a Kula Devi, you had a Kula guru, you had a Grama Devata, a Grama guru, a Nagara Devata, a Nagara guru. This is what Sanatani life is. But is it not creating the division? Because at the end of the day, it is about being here and now, and then the surrender has to be to the existence of the cause, that is the final pedestal. You use any, any teaching, any guru, that is the final pedestal. But then the pitfalls are there, no? Who is protecting you from the pitfalls? The guru is here to ensure that you are protected from the pitfalls. You just said to me, no, at the beginning, when you came and sat there, you said that, yeah, I mean, I get, I get sort of back into that, that spaced out state. Why do you get back into that state? Because there's nobody there to show you when you're going astray on your path. Yeah, but the biggest challenge which comes in is of work and money and managing yourself in the... What makes you think that what I'm saying is going to make you less money? Tell me, prove it to me. How is it going to make you less money? How is it going to take you away from your job? It's going to ensure that you get a partner in your life, that you take up the job that is good for you, and that, that means you haven't understood anything of what I'm saying, which I am doubting because you're quite smart. No, that is not like... You don't want that discipline, that's the point. You don't want to take up... Saying I don't want the discipline of integrity. No, you don't want the discipline of living a disciplined life. You want freedom, but your idea of freedom is actually a trap, which is not allowing you to be joyous. That's what I'm saying. So, in other words, how old are you now? 32. 32. Why don't you have a partner? You have a partner? Or a different one every week, right? No, 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 no. Or once every month? You're 32, you're an old man already. 
Yeah, I had some, but yeah, I'm this. Shouldn't you be in a, in a, just in a simple partnership with some kids and just doing your job? And that's what normal is. And you don't, you didn't show up here because you know exactly I'm going to push you into that normal, which is what you don't want because you want your freedom, but then you're not joyous. No, I'm trying very hard to. First, I need to integrate my work in regular life. Then only I can have somebody in my life. First, I need to be. I've heard this from so many young, young men now, it's not funny anymore. First I have this and then that, because you guys don't want to take responsibility, because now you can explore the secret cave of the female without having to take up responsibility for that, but you destroy yourself in that process. But that was not the case, to be honest. thing is the balancing of work with heightened sensitivity because if you let go in, in certain, the sensitivity increases and gets little less. For example, this person asked about technology and this almost resists to 80% of the structure outside. So then explain to me, how does a Deshna, for example, she's almost the whole day, she's there with tech and this and that and programming and how come she's in, in sadhana at the same time or Varsha is there, she's not doing so much of tech but she has two children, she's married, husband, everything. How is that possible? And they look kind of okay, no? Does she look okay to you? There are worse people around on this planet. She looks more joyous than you do. If you take up a practice of asking Source if the action you're undertaking is coming from ahankar or it's coming from truth, how does that stop you from living in this world? It exactly supports you to live in this world. My question, when you say asking <laughs> from the soul, okay. I'm not going to the next philosophical discourse. First you answer that question. Yes, yeah. How is it stopping you? It's because you're not taking up the practice correctly. You're taking it up halfway, half-half. And you're not able to avoid the pitfalls because you're refusing to understand that you need to have a spiritual teacher or guide to hold you through those moments so you don't fall into the, into the pit. And there are so many teachers you know, I'm sure that wherever, where do you live? Goa. Oh, you live in Goa. There are a lot of amazing teachers here. Find one for yourself. No, I don't. Because your ego is so big, that's why there are so many around. There's one in, in Asagao, he's also, no? There's a, a spiritual master there, if you live nearby there. But do something. Take up a teacher and try to understand yourself through the eyes of somebody who has more knowledge than you do. No, when you say understanding myself, what do you mean by that? To be honest, this, this, this doesn't know any question which comes in when I have to understand myself. Then why are you not joyous? If you were joyous, if you came here and said, I'm feeling very joyous, then I'd say, okay, you're not supposed to sit there to share things. Do you have a question? That's what I would say, right? But you're telling me you're not joyous and you can't be because you refuse the idea that you can just bow down to someone else other than uh, I don't know, maybe some pop star or something. I don't know if you're into that. <laughs> some trance DJ or something. Which is fine. I mean, you can do that. Better is to bow down to everyone. Bow down to the tree, to the river. That's what dharma teaches us. Yeah, so. So? But the only one you haven't bowed down to is an external guru. Life will make you go and bow down to a guru. Finally, you'll have to do that. It is not, when you ask about the joy, so in the, on the last conversation we had, you said there is no, there is no destination. Yes. Just stay here and... Now, now, yeah. now. This moment, no thinking always, if I do this, what will happen there, that, this, that. Always projecting into the future, no. If you're just present, clear, your eyes open, aware, life will start to live itself. You don't have to do anything. Know what I mean? Hmm. I think that part you understand, right? Yeah, you were actually established into the here and now. This feeling there is nothing which can take you away now. Yes. So there is a very constant hankering of that, that, that instance. In, 
and that is the destination which is becoming. Yeah, that is samarpan, that is through bending. It is true, it's an addiction then. The present moment becomes the place to be and it's just that exciting and so much going on and every human being and everything becomes magical. That, that is the state of self-realization. It's a sort of a... It's, it's not that you reach a goal, but it deepens to the extent where every moment is just, you know... And people, people are listening to me and I don't know how many people even understand what I'm saying. But the, the point of the matter is, it's a real experience. You do not experience suffering after that. Hmm. You do not. Yeah, that, I was, that was I was told, yeah. And there is no, there is no suffering over there. There's, there's, no feeling, suffering. there's no There's no friction, there's no... There's only joy. Even when something happens, let's say, you trip and fall, you hurt yourself, it is still the joy. The joy is just there. And it's real and it's possible for everyone to experience this as long as they don't leave the system into cosmic experience. If you stay within yourself, you can reach that point. But in your case, you're going to have to bend. The samarpan has to be learnt. My learning some of the samarpan, it happens. It, it, it is not lengthy. You can, so whatever you will do, what, and this is mine, whatever is being done, whatever is being posed upon is, is from the ego only. The, the samarpan happens. Indeed, but sometimes you need that, you know, that that push in order to move into that state. And that push does come from the ego. And that's okay. It's the ego called Mohit. What's your mother's name? Sunita. Mohit, son of Sunita from where? Delhi. You were born in Delhi? Yeah. So Mohit, son of Sunita from Delhi, is that reduced minor identity which is the minimum ego needed to survive. And that's that ego which pushes you into the samarpan. It's a very amazing thing if you allow it to happen. But there's, there's also a constant work that I want to shun away any identity, any, there's, there's no identity. You'll have to take up identity because otherwise ego grows and it, it'll take over your process. Ego grows like how? Like if I'm not holding on to any... Who is the I that is not holding on to something? And with that question, I'll, I'll leave you to ponder about that. If you're here tomorrow, I'll certainly let you uh, give me the results of your... Who is the I that doesn't want any identity? On the last conversation you said, one has to embody one identity in a solid format. A minimal identity, yeah. Yeah, to live in, in, in the world. And after that, what I shared with you is there is a hankering to be without any identity. And then you said, what is that which is actually looking for no identity? What is it that is hankering after the no identity what state? Uh -huh. what, what is that I which is looking for this should be no I? That, that was the last conversation we had. So, this is just a memory of an instance where there was, there was complete dissolution of identity. Yes. So that is like there's a constant hankering of being there, being there, being there. And that actually, uh, what I also have observed is there's a certain self annihilating tendencies building up in terms of like, I just won't it is coming into my behavior also, like, which is not healthy. What started out this whole discourse was that you came and said that you had stopped coming to the satsangs because you felt that you were being pulled away internally, not uh, externally, from the normal life 
because you were attending the satsangs and you were starting to space out. This is what you had said, to which I said that this is certainly the opposite of what these satsangs are meant to reach. And that is that they are meant to exactly bring you back into this world, present, aware, alert, and in order to be present, aware, and alert, you need to take up a minimal identity. No, they were not spacing out. They were being very helpful. The practices that you have undertaken, or the books you have read, or the experiences you mm -hmm. have had, taking you in the direction of cosmic consciousness, of samadhi states. A dissolution of identity is a samadhi state. If it is a complete dissolution of identity where you don't know anymore where you are, it is what we call a nirvikalpa samadhi. It's a samadhi mm. without any attributes. Mm. Mm. So you mm. don't know who is observing, who is... There is nothing there. Mm. Mm. The only way you know that you were in that state is when you're not in that state anymore. When you suddenly realize, oh, I was in a place which was something else, which has not even an eye actually observing anything. Then your system starts to hanker after that, that state of total dissolution of identity. You want that state because it's a, it's a state where you don't feel the pain of the body and the pain of the reality of life. And this teaching says, no, beta, ye mat karo, idhar rao, stay here, do not go into that state, do not allow the hankering after that state. And in that context, I asked you, if you're yearning for dissolution of identity, who is that thing that is yearning for it? What is the I that is yearning for it? Who is that I? What is that I? Mm, that is again, ego which is saying, I, I know. So, I know. Is that I called Mohit or is that I called Dino? What is the name of that I that is yearning for that? From which mouth did that word I come out? This body. What is the name of this body? It has a name, right? It has, it has an Aadhaar card number also. That space was nameless. That if I'm able to convey it here. I mean, you have a mouth, you have a tongue. There's a name to this body that's speaking. Isn't that name Mohit? Hmm. No? Yeah. That... Without the body, you can't speak, right? You can't even say the word I. Without the body, can you speak? No, I cannot. I yeah, I cannot, yeah, yeah. So then the body is speaking, right? Yeah, yeah. The body has a name. It was born somewhere. Yeah. It has a yeah, mother. Yeah. So you can't deny these three facts. Because the name yeah. is given at birth, so it sticks to you. Okay, you can even throw away the name, but can you throw away the mother? From whose body you came, it's a fact. It has been witnessed by many people. Right. Right? So you can't deny that fact. Right. So that is taken as that minimal identity, that which is undeniable by any conceptual exercise. No conceptual exercise can deny the I-ness of the body. It hmm. is you, Mohit, who uh, is yearning for that state. So the Mohit is always around. Whatever you do, it's around. Hmm. Hmm. So the next step is to say, okay, if Moet is around, if this body is around, then this body is doing something. It's, it's, it's got a raison d'etre, it's hmm. got a reason for its existence. So what is that reason? Why is it here? If dissolution of identity is the aim of an existence, then why even be in a body, then that whole identity and all the, the ego identification connected with the body is done away with in one go. One can be a spirit. Then the problem is resolved. Hmm. So I looked into this when you, when you mentioned that uh, that is not the right approach towards living. So my... I didn't say that. I said, if you want to live in this world, you want a partner, you want children, you want to take up a job, then you can't take up a practice which 
results in a dissolution of identity. Because you need identity to take up this presence. You cannot be there, I'm not this body and there is no I. How are you supposed to get a partner and children and all? Then you have to go to the Himalaya. I know some good caves there, I'll introduce you to sit there. There's Ganga Jal also nearby flowing by, you don't even have to walk far to drink. Most of the youth of this country have a deep, have a deep yearning for self-knowledge. It is, it is hardwired into your genetics. And the first thing they're looking at is, I'll go to the Himalaya. Chala jaunga. Main Himalaya jaunga. That is the answer, I'll go to the Himalaya. It's not the answer. Firstly, there are not that many caves for 300 million young men. And secondly, that's not the place where you go to find self. That is the place where you go to dissolve identity. So, can I... There's never this intention of going away. All of these instances were always right in the middle of while I was working or while I was doing it. It was never in a... But you're going away inside. Dissolution of identity means going away from the body. Nothing else. Okay. So my... One of the challenges I was facing why all of this started is... is, is a lot of conflicts. Conflicts in terms of what to do, what work, decisions and everything. I've seen with other people as well, this all gets resolved when you practice being present. And that was a point where it was yes. actually being present. But when I was aware of, okay, I'll have to reach somewhere, I have to be here. It just happened. Well, being in the present moment doesn't mean you've dissolved identity. You're conflating two premises, two positions. One is, that being in the present moment, you're here and now, and you're just present. There is no past, there is no future, and you're so present that you're able to act from the truth impulse, not the ego. When you're in this moment, you will always act from the truth impulse. Where does the disillusion... So this hankering is also of the ego only? In, of course yeah. it's the ego. If that's not the ego, then I'd really like to know what you would call ego. Any hankering is ego, any hankering. Hankering means yearning for something to arrive in the future. Or again. Hmm? Or, or, or again, you want, you want to have it again. Again means future. Hmm. Hmm. I can tell you each person what they're hankering for. He's hankering for a future where he doesn't have the pain of separation. He's hankering for a future where he has a nice girlfriend. She's hankering for a future where her body is intact again. Like that, it'll go on non-stop, non-stop. Everyone is anchoring. And I'm anchoring, of course, for a nice, relaxed afternoon because I don't have to be here tomorrow morning. <laughs> so everybody's anchoring for something in the future, but the present tense is the moment, in this present moment. And the reason why I really was on alert with you is because of one thing you said. And you said that after coming to the satsangs, you felt that you were again sort of drifting away from your... Uh, from the world, that was what you said. And I was, no, you haven't got the teaching right if that's what you're saying. You are drifting away because you're going into all that other stuff. And all I'm saying is very simple. Your name is Mohit, you're, you're born from your mother, from Delhi. You're in this moment, you're here, you're in surrender to Source and you're acting from that. A guy like you, you should have a partner by now, you should have a couple of children. What are you doing? Or you sit in the Himalaya, go. I told you I had no cave. No, that is not... You don't want No. Okay, then what? Then you have to have a family, raise children, contribute to society. I want to do good work, that, that is... Um, do good yeah. work. You'll do good work if you're here. If you dissolve identity, how are you going to do good work? Who is the guy doing the work then? That... I, I'm not denying that... I'm just... I'm just putting this... There is an hankering which is... which is there. I'm fully with you. I know what you're talking about. But you lost, what you did was, you came here to the satsang, you received something, you did not grasp fully what I'm talking about, you applied it in, in the ways of the past that your system understands, and then again it's going to take you away from the present moment. A guy like you, you should be doing seva, you should be doing dan, you should be doing dakshina, you should be moving towards a partnership, just simple stuff, simple. 
simple stuff is the stuff of spirituality. Look at your great grandfather or even your grandfather. What kind of men were they? Were they were they were tough guys? They stood straight. Dharma was what upheld their their daily uh, routine. That's it. And one day they died. That's what life is. It's not about this flip out and dissolution of identity and this and that and and everyone wants to smoke dope and dissolve their identity. I'm not saying you. I'm saying there are at least 100 million young men in India whose dream is to go to the Himalaya. Out of that, 500,000 have smoked at least 10 joints the day before they had this thought. <laughs> and I'm not against anything, I'm not against anything. Smoke, drink, do whatever you like. But when it comes to taking up a spiritual path, you have to be serious about it. You cannot just say, ha, I will read a book padunga. I'm a spiritual person. No, you're not. A Sanatani spiritual path has certain lines, it has certain definitions, it has certain contours. One of the things is you decide, are you into enlightenment processes, in which case don't hope to be in this world, don't hope to function in this world. Or are you taking up self-realization processes, which will bring you to self, bring you to this moment, and lead you to leading a life of dignity, raising your children in a dharmic way. These are your two paths to take. So you're sitting in front of someone who's telling you, it's either this or it's that. And in, of course, when you take up living in, in this moment and being present and doing your dharma, there are different paths you can take in that. But one cannot conflate these two ideas, the, 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 the processes of self-realization and the processes of enlightenment. These are two different things. So my question is how my experience is, I mean, I, yes. is how can, they are not different. You say that Atma Gyan and Samadhi are both different things. That is what you are pointing. Self-realization and enlightenment is different. But I'm saying, some, my thing is, if somebody is practicing let go, yes. or being present, at some point it is not in their hands where it will... It's always, it's only in your hands. It's only in your hands. In whose hands is it then? In, in Big Brother's hands or in... But it is about uh, somebody's honest and sincere to reach to the same uh, point only. Anybody does it, anywhere in the world. If, you're, if you want to go to Kashmir uh, and you're faced in the direction of Kanyakumari, you can reach Kashmir, but you're going to have to make many rounds till you reach there. But if you face in the direction of Kashmir, then you'll reach Kashmir. You can't want to reach Kashmir, then reach Kanyakumari and say that Kanyakumari is actually like Kashmir. It's not. Kanyakumari is the south, Kashmir is in the north. These are two poles of that spectrum, two ends of that spectrum. There are two ends of that spectrum. When you go out and you leave the body into samadhi states, you detach from the materiality of your system. You can't be here and now anymore. <coughs> hmm. 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 That is why all the great masters, they were, they were in this, you know, when, when they go into the samadhi states, they are, they are, you can actually see the light coming out of their eyes. It's actually coming out of the eyes. Why? Because the skull opens up and light enters into the system. Light, sunlight. It's material. That is what is the Ardha Kapala Bhedana. The skull opens up because of the pressures of enlightenment. The, the, the Shakti pushes the consciousness out of the system into Samadhi states. The system opens up. That's why their eyes shine like that. Once they're out, they have to reintegrate into the system in order to repopulate the body. Hmm. And when they repopulate the body, they can never sit completely inside the body because they've been out too long. So there's always a detachment from the body. And that detachment from the body is what brings suffering to the body. So why, if you anyway want self-realization, why go into enlightenment? For what reason? You can have self-realization, here and now, present, without dissolution of identity. I feel it, that is not, it is not, but the, so okay, if we start from here only, I feel it, but there are still conflicts. 
in, in the head. Because you've read a lot of nonsense, that's why. Your conflicts are conceptual conflicts, they're not experiential conflicts. Yeah, that is knowledge creating different… Put all those books which you have in your house in the garbage, anyways, it's finished. I don't read anymore. Even better for you then. You're living here in Goa, you're coming to these satsangs, you have an opportunity of a lifetime to take up something like this. There are people sitting here who would give an arm and a leg, they live in other countries, they don't get visas, this and that. How many of them come and ask how to get a visa to stay here? You have a visa, no? Hmm. Hmm. Then take it up. Take up this sadhana, it'll keep you sane. And I'm not saying that because I have anything to gain from you. Nothing. It's seriously an amazing sadhana. Take it up. Seriously, then you'll understand gradually what I'm talking about. Honestly, when I came in here, it was not that it was making me spacing out or anything. The practice or the direction I was into is more or less similar to this. That's why. That's what everybody said. After you practice it for a year, then you'll say, ah, it was what not really the, similar. What is the practice you're referring to here? Now the bell has rung. You, you didn't come all those days because you thought you were being uh, sort of drifting away from the... No, 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 that was not, no, no. I, it, it really helped me actually, I, I, my sleep and everything got better. Why don't you, I, I have a very good idea. I have so many amazing sadhaks and say, why don't you talk to them, they'll tell you. You had all these days to come, the bell has rung and now you ask me what is the practice? No, I'll no. show you with one hand what the practice is. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find out, keep coming to the ashram, you can go and sit in the cafe and hope that somebody will deign to talk to you. That's another way of finding out. You can watch the videos also. You can attend the immersive also. I do the best I can, I'm available as much as I can. You can come on the audio lives and ask the question, okay? I think there's one, two weeks, every Sunday. You can ask on the audio live, okay? No, I mean, there are other, some reasons. I mean, it was not facing out, but I mean, getting into another... I just said something. Yeah. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, I did. What did I say? See, either I can come for audio level or I can ask people around. That's, exactly. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Do you appreciate that opportunity? Yeah, but there's nothing to ask me right now. You just asked me what I was asked you practice? because I, I, because, I because I know what you... What you said, I understood, and then you're saying they take up this practice. I'm saying I'm already... But you said, what is this? You asked me a question, what is this practice? So I said, I can't answer you now, the bell is rung, but you can come on an audio live and ask the question, what is the practice, and then I will tell you. No? You don't want to do that? <laughs> you think about it, you tell us, okay? We'll wait with bated breath yeah, yeah. for your answer. Yeah. Thank you. Namaskar. <laughs> the bell has rung. We invite you to an audio live satsang with Maharishika Priti this Sunday. To know more, click the link in the description below.